Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to start the first in a series of uh, videos uh, take, taking a look at my collection of uh, old cameras. Uh, and we're going to start off with uh, six here. Uh, three range finders, two SLRs and a lovely old Kodak autographic camera uh, which is the oldest of the bunch. So let's see what we've got. So we've got a Yashica 35 Electro GS model, we've got a Minolta Hymatic 7, we've got a lovely little Konica C35, those are the three rangefinders, the two uh, SLRs are the Asahi Pentax SP1000 and we've got a lovely little uh, very heavy Zeiss Icon Contaflex and the oldest camera as I said is the Kodak Vest Potic, uh, Vest Potic, Vest Pocket Autobi Auto Autographic let me say that again didn't sound really good did it it's a Kodak Vest Pocket Autographic from 1916 to 1926 I believe. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now is give you a brief look at each camera individually and then later on in the series, I'm going to start looking at each camera individually, going out on a shoot and showing you the results uh, that you can get from them. Uh, I'll be using a mixture of color film and uh, black and white. So let's have a look at each camera on its own. Here we have the Con Konica C35. This is uh, the automatic and this was introduced in 1974. The original Konica C35 uh, was introduced in 1971. Now the cost of this camera back in 1974 was £49.90. So not a particular cheap camera in those days. It's a really nice compact light camera and it's got a wrist strap here that you could carry around with you all day. I mean you could slip it into the pocket of, I mean I've got a hoodie on at the moment and it'll sit quite happily in that. It has a 38mm 2.8 hexanon lens and it's quite a nice lens actually and it's got a close focus of 3.3 feet. Uh, it's also got an SD, meet, SD cell in there, you can see there. So really you should keep a lens cap on if you've got it in storage. Um, the ISO goes from 25 to 400 uh, and it's got a shutter rate speed range of 1 30th to 1 650th of a second. And it's got a coupled range finder uh, and it's quite nice to use. Um, I haven't taken any photographs with this as it happens at the moment so I'm just waiting for things to change because I haven't had it that long um, and I bought it off eBay. Uh, it was for sale at £8.50 believe it or not and I actually got it for that money and one of the reasons why it was so cheap is that uh, it said the, uh, uh, the back wouldn't open up but it was a little bit stiff but but as you can see, you have to sometimes push on the back there and pull the rewind lever up and it will pop out. And it's nice and clean inside. It's quite a nice little camera actually. Uh, but it's just that uh, sticky door and I think it's the, the, see there, that point that actually locks on to the door. Uh, just needs a little bit of adjustment. But yeah, a lovely little camera to carry around and it's supposed to give extremely good results. Um, so we will see. It's a gorgeous little camera and I could carry this one around all day with me and so I'm going to give it a bit of a workout soon. Uh, there's a little area quite local to me and once the lockdown's over, uh, hopefully in a few weeks time, uh, I'll be able to get out and take some decent photographs with this and I'll show you the results. 
This is the Minolta Hymatic 7 and it was the uh, follow-up to the Minolta Hymatic which was released in 1963. This came along a year later in 1964 and one of the changes was uh, the original had a 45mm f1.2 lens you can see there and this has an f1.8 lens it has a shutter speed that goes from uh, a quarter of a second all the way up to one five hundredths with a leaf shutter. Uh, it's also got a bulb mode and a fully automatic mode. And the focusing is by moving that lever there. And it's got a close focus of 0.9 meters. So it's a fraction over three feet three feet actually so yeah it's a it's a nice heavy camera uh, you can fit a strap the ISO settings are adjusted by if you can see it by this little tab here and they go from uh, ISO or ASA 25 all the way up to 800 so quite a reasonable range there it's got a CDS light meter as the previous Konica one did and the back opens up by just pulling the sleever here there we go very nice heavy capable camera this and it's got a very lovely lens by all accounts again I haven't really used this uh, it's just been sitting on the shelf since I got it um, I actually paid £10 for this and it's in fully working order um, and again camera to see some results with soon and I'll be posting an in-depth look at this camera as I will be with the Konica uh, very soon yes this is the Electro 35 GS if it was a GSN it would be an all black unit and these cameras were renowned for being uh, quite advanced for the time and this was introduced in 1970 um, and the complex electronics can sometimes let it down it suffers with what's called the pad of death and although it can be repaired it's it's quite a faff to do and you need to know what you're doing anyway i'll go into that in a in a in a more detailed uh, review of this camera with pictures and again this is one camera that i haven't haven't really used uh, but plan on doing so as I will with the others uh, so some details it's got a leaf shutter uh, it's a range finder and it's got a CDS cell for the metering uh, it's got a maximum aperture of the lens of 1.7 it's a 45 millimeters and it's a very 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 capable lens uh, shutter speed goes from a quarter to five hundredth of a second uh, which is usually the maximum uh, shutter speed for a leaf shutter and it's also got a bulb mode so a very nice camera and again it opens up with a pull on that there there we go These go for a reasonable amount of money these days. I mean, I, I picked this one up for £21 and it's fully functional. Uh, it probably needs the light seal replacing, but then uh, cameras of this age usually do, regardless of what model they are. Uh, but again, I'll go, be going into more detail about this camera as and when I've taken some pictures and I'll give it a full review. So look at that for that one coming soon. Right, let's have a look at the first LR. And we've got this lovely little offering from Asahi Pentax. The SP or Spotmatic 1000. Uh, it had um, a sibling which was the SP500. And as you would expect, the SP500 had a maximum shutter speed of 
five hundredths of a second this has a fastest shutter speed of a thousandth uh, and it's a lovely very capable camera it was introduced in 1974 I believe and it's got an M42 screw mount so you've got access to a vast array of lenses quite cheap lenses uh, to suit all your needs um, the Pentax lenses as you very well know are very capable and are very sought after this one hasn't got the original lens with it it's got a Pentacon 50mm 1.8 which is quite a good lens to be quite honest with you it's got a maximum aperture of uh, 1.8 all the way down to 16 and this lens actually according to this uh, focuses down to 1.1 foot which is uh, very close indeed um, it's a very basic lens and it's got uh, center weighted metering um, and you've got uh, a needle that tells you that moves if you press this button up here it'll tell you if you've got the right exposure or not um, so the shutter speeds go all the way from one second up to one thousandth and also bulb and the ISO settings go from let's have a look yeah 1600 1600 right the way down to uh, an ISO of 20 it's a very capable camera a uh, basic camera and it's ideal for learning the art of photography um, it's got another brother called the K1000 uh, which is very sought after and very expensive uh, these days uh, this is a very good alternative and uh, this one cost me I believe let me just check 22 pounds and I think it's an absolute bargain uh, it's fully functional and it's very clean inside yeah I think I'll be replacing the seals in this one uh, before I use it but I'm looking forward to using this one and again as with the other cameras we've talked about uh, I'll be uh, using this and posting an in-depth uh, how-to on this and show you some results the second SLR I'm going to show you today is one of my favourites in the collection and I like quirky things and this is certainly that and it's the Zeiss Icon Contaflex. It was made in 1953 and it's got a leaf shutter and the, sh the, the lens is a Tessar 50mm f1.8 um, and it's got a close focus of let me see 0.7 meters which is about 2.6 foot um, and you can see here we've got some tabs that allow you to focus and it's got uh, a leaf shutter and it goes from one second up to 500 as you'd expect with a leaf shutter and also bulb uh, the lens goes from f 2.8 up to f 22 uh, the quirky thing about this is is the uh, shutter and how you uh, view your image and it's quite complex and I wouldn't like to uh, try and repair one of these uh, but anyway I'll show you now I'll take the back off and to take the back off you flip these tabs up rotate them 180 degrees and then the back just pulls off on the far east okay now you can see in there that there's no shutter frame flat shutter curtain there as I said it's a leaf shutter so the leaf shutter is closed at the moment so what happens is that when 
I wind on the film. You can see a, not a curtain, but uh, a flap comes down to stop any light getting to the film plane. Uh, and at the same time, the leaf shutter has opened. So the consequence of this is that you get an extremely bright viewfinder. It's one of the brightest I've ever seen on a camera. Uh, it's quite extraordinary to be honest. So what happens when you fire the shutter? Well, shutter being open, as you fire the shutter, you can see here, the shutter closes, the flap goes up, and then the shutter operates to take your picture. So there's three operations there once you press that shutter button. Let's do it once again. Films wound on, flaps come down, shutters opened. So I think you saw that then. The flap go up, the shutter open, and then close again. So that's a very quirky and a very complex uh, shutter system. And I, should, I dread to uh, have to repair that. Uh, but that's why I love these quirky cameras. I've got a few others in the collection which I'll come to on uh, another video. But that's one of my favourites and I'm going to I'm going to put this through its paces as with the others sometime soon and I'll be giving a full review of this and show you what sort of pictures it takes. Um, it's quite a well respected camera this. Uh, how much should I pay for it? Considering this is a fully working camera, I actually paid £18 for this, uh, which I thought was a cracking deal. And if you look um, look on the internet, uh, eBay and places like that, you, they're, they're, they're not commonplace, but you do come across them occasionally. And I've seen them go for a lot more than that. But this is a fully working unit, as you could see. Um, and it deserves some use. It doesn't deserve to sit in a box somewhere gathering dust, which it probably has been for the last 20, 30 years, who knows? But anyway, that's my favorite out of this particular lot. So we come on to the final camera uh, out of today's uh, six cameras. I'm, I'm showing you and it's also one of my favorites and I haven't had it that long only a well, couple of months just before Christmas I bought this one and it's a Kodak autographic no let me get this right I always get the name of these wrong and it tends to get me in a bit of a tongue twister as well so here it goes again it's a Kodak vest pocket autographic I've got it right and this was produced between I believe 1917 to 1926 uh, so this is probably older than my dad um, it is older than my dad uh, it's, a, it's a really nice camera I love these it's it's a part of history and these cameras were designed for soldiers to American soldiers to take into World War One. Um, so yeah, it's it's a lovely little camera. Anyway, to open this up, you just pull on those little tabs. There's one there. Oops, one there, and one on that side. Just pull, and you've got. A viewing window there and it's a very simple affair it does work and although it's difficult to see when I do a full review of this camera I'll show you in a bit more detail and get a better lens to to show you the um, what's on this plate 
and you need a magnifying glass really to see it but it's got four um, apertures on the lens which is a meniscus lens I don't know whether you can see that aperture moving if I can get my nail around the lever yep you can just about see it move there we go and it's the speeds are very difficult to see but you've got the shutter speeds are moved by this tab right at the top and you've got a 25th bulb T and then 1 50th of a second uh, and that's all you've got with this camera and the shutter is operated by pressing that there there's no there's no um, double exposure lock on it you can just do as many exposures as you want and on the back here let me just close it up let me just close it up there and on the back here the reason it was called Nautic Graphic is that you could with special film you could open up this tab uh, to give you access to the back of the film and then you've got uh, these are quite often lost and you've got this little stencil here and you could write where you were in the war or where, wherever you were uh, or a park with a, in a picnic and just write where you were and it would be etched onto the film when it was developed These took 127 films and you can open the back here and that just pops off and slot your film in there it's got a 127 film carrier and you had to slot your film through that slot and round not the easiest of operations I wouldn't have thought but um, simple enough and then you lock it by twisting the tab around again so lovely camera bit of patina on it it's not perfect in cosmetically but it does work and again I'm looking forward to taking some nice black and whites with this love it So I hope you've enjoyed that little look at uh, some of the cameras in my collection uh, which has grown from a couple of years ago um, and I, I much prefer shooting um, analogue cameras than digital these days uh, although I bought a, a new Fuji X-T3 which is an extremely capable camera uh, but when you compare it to some of these units um, there's just something about these that I, I find fascinating and I love to use them and I was brought up in an age where uh, that's all we've got you know just film cameras um, but yeah I'm rambling now so I hope you've enjoyed that little look at some of the cameras in the collection I'll be releasing another video next week showing uh, five or six more um, and I'll also be going into more depth on each of these cameras uh, and making a, se a proper series out of this um, probably try and release one video a week um, but to start that I'm going to have to take some films with the camera uh, put some film through the camera and that might take a little bit more time so say within a couple of weeks I'll start releasing these videos so again I'm rambling so I hope you've enjoyed that please subscribe please like and please comment it should really help the channel and I want to see if I can get this channel to grow um, so once again I'm going to stop rambling I'm going to have a cup of tea 
I'm going to edit this video. Bye bye.